what standard do you use, by the way? So let's let's use that as a quick example. So um, again, I said I'll use myself because I'm trying to get as much uh, free coaching as I can here. So if I love doing my VO2 max sets on a bike, on a hill, and uh, I have a fixed distance that I ride, so it really depends on the wind. So if I have a headwind, it'll take about five minutes. Um, and if I have a tailwind, it could take, you know, 345. That's how much the wind can play a role on this hill. Um, but basically it's not an all out effort because you want to be able to do it multiple times, but it's a very hard effort followed by about a one to one ratio of recovery. And that's the workout after a warm up. it's over and over and over and over again. And it's like an hour of doing that. Now I typically, and I think this is because I've become softer in my old age, I typically ascend in power. So I will typically start out at a very conservative power where at the very end, I am not dead. But by the end, by the last one, I might be doing 10% more power than on the first set, and I'm absolutely at my limit. What would you, how would you recommend I change that? Would you recommend, well, yeah, you, you want that to be within 5% the whole way through, or, or how would you recommend that? If, no, if no. again, the goal is maximizing that workout to maximize VO2 max and to increase the engine size. You know, to, uh, maybe we should add one more dimension to this now, because I think that very often we confuse, for example, also when we talk about FTP, just FTP, and we black box a metric as FTP instead of saying 60 minute power or yes. 20 minute power, or whatever. What's really accurate with the 20, when you say 20 minute power, 60 minute power, you basically know that, okay, you can hold that power for that duration. That's the maximum, for example, before you basically end up dropping too much and you yep. just call it, uh, call it, uh, David. Very often when we talk about VU to max, it's very often confused with aerobic capacity while in reality it's not it's aerobic power uh, yes. so basically what you're measuring there you're measuring how much oxygen for for let's say for our undefined time yes we have normalized this as milliliters per minute but you can have a big range between athletes that has the same view to make some can do that for several minutes some can only do that for let's say one minute for example so now when you, uh, and, and this is where the important is, because we're looking for to provide signal, signaling and or the stimulus to the body. If you go out and you do one five minute interval, more or less, then basically, okay, fine. That's the stimulus that you're providing yourself there. So this is about how, okay, you got a certain amount of time available to go out and do that view to max session uh, today, for example. So let's say there's 90 minutes. Then basically, of course, now I'm um, now this is one dimensional because I'm not because we're not talking only about a single single uh, workout as well. I think the most undervalued thing, which is not very sexy to talk about, and also the most undervalued thing is that basically is consistency, consistency in the training over time, mm -hmm. and that means that you need to leave a little bit in reserve there. And we haven't even touched on the topic of psychology yet either, because we are very much not talking about the things in physiology that we are good at measuring and these kind of things, but there are also plenty of things that we are not able to measure. And even the things that we like to say that we oh, we are so good in stoichiometry or are so good in understanding metabolic pathways or signaling pathways, there's still things added to this where we basically understand that no, we don't. And then we haven't even dived into the topic of a microbiome or basically how basically we are yeah, it, it, it's it's a world, undiscovered world that we are basically taking on now. So one one of the things that is that when you're doing this exercise, then I think that, uh, but a good thing with VO2 is that, of course, that we're measuring a quantity, we're measuring a volume of something. It's much in the same way when we, when we talk about power versus work. So you talk about work, for example. So when you say, to, to, so to make this a little bit more practical, so when you say, okay, I want to basically do my VO2 max work workouts, I go, I go a little bit progressive. I would normally say that's a good, that's a good thing to do okay. because also what happens is there is a priming effect also happening in the body as well. So if you go out like where you think that you maybe would be able to sustain throughout the workout, you might figure out that you still are able to go a little bit higher. At some point, it's the opposite. But we, one thing that we have done multiple times over the last half decade is, is that very often people think that, okay, when I've done a view to max effort, then basically I'm done. I won't be able to repeat that. I need uh, two days of rest or maybe a week of rest or whatever before I can do that. That's not true either. We know that, for example, if you do a view to max effort and then basically you give an adequate time of rest in between there, you are able to go even harder on the next one now, even though that was completely too exhaustion on the first one.
completely. So let's say more about that. So get, put some time and numbers to it so I can understand what you're saying. So you could take one of your athletes and what duration of an interval would you have them push to? So for example, here, let's say that we are using an uh, old fashioned uh, way of quantifying VO2 max. So you just say that you do a graded exercise test. So you increase the power by uh, 5%, for example, every minute that goes yep. there until you basically come to exhaustion. Yes. So let's say that, let's say that now that uh, the athlete finishes around uh, 500 watts uh, and around seven liters of oxygen. And for, for, for the listener, that's a world, those are world-class numbers that are obscene. Like that's, that's, there's no, there's, you're not running into people on the street that can do that, but carry on. <laughs> yeah. And here already, I haven't told what's happening before there as well, because if I only took them fresh doing this, then the power number would be different. So again, this comes back a little bit to talking about power at view to max, where this is already manipulated, depending on what you've done before this as well. So now basically uh, they, they do this. So let's say that they last for six minutes and if they finish the last one on, let's say 500 watts, uh, 500 last minute on 500 watts, maybe they go a couple of seconds longer into the next one. And this is also important. So when you do a great exercise test, if you come to the next step now and you feel that, oh, this is too hard, push as long as you can because every second count there because it's more work. It's more work, it's more oxygen consumed. Their strongest stimulus, more or less. I wouldn't advise doing this very often, but we can come back to that a little bit later because I'm not a big fan of doing very often like two exhaustion workouts that you should put them in very sparingly into your yep. program. And that ties back to consistency. But anyways, now given in between, the, let's say you, we, we, if we give 10 minutes of rest in between them or a little bit more rest in between there, then basically if you do now a new view to max, you'll bring the athlete up to the same athlete we bring now to more than seven liters so 7.1 or maybe even a little bit, high, little bit higher and power output is also now for example um, comes up now maybe one more minute at one one higher power code so now we are already at maybe 525 watts for one minute as well and you're saying that that's happening because they've been primed by the first set to be able to do that with only 10 minutes of rest with only if it goes too long rest in between there then basically you start to lose the effect so if the if the, if, if the duration of the rest in between there then you, you are not able to draw the effect of that any, anymore that can be i think you could probably extend it up to 15 or maybe 20 minutes but when you get past 20 minutes then i would be a little bit uh, I, i'm not so sure whether that would hold true anymore so it needs to be short and this can also come back to because we know also that oxygen how when we when we think about hemoglobin hemoglobin as well the affinity for, of, of oxygen and CO2 to the hemoglobin is also affected by the temperature of the blood or the body and, and, and the hemoglobin as well. So this is also improving actually with a higher temperature than it is at a cola. So when you get 20 minutes, obviously temperature of your body will also come further down, mm. come longer down than it is at 10 minutes. 10 minutes, it will also come down, but maybe not as much. But the most interesting thing that happens also now is the RER value is heavily skewed towards oxygen consumption and less carbon dioxide production so you would even when you do did when when you do this you would even say that this, this doesn't qualify for a v2 max so the v2 so the v2 numbers now are equally high or higher but the carbon dioxide production is actually now just maybe a little bit higher than one in RR value. And normally we would say that if you if you just went, went by the papers or the old school books, you would say that, okay, in order for qualify of to max that, you should, for example, like one of the criteria is often they say that you need to exceed an RR value of 1.1, for example, for it to be valid. Of course, what, you, what, what you're going to say, the view to max value, value was higher. Are we now going to disqualify? 